about the dancing world, about the stripping world? Like what? Because a lot of people see it as glamorous. A lot of young girls out there like, man, I'm going to get my money. You know what I mean? But do you feel like it was all fun at that time or was there some some definitely some low parts or like what it was? Yeah, it's definitely low parts and it is fun parts. It's fun parts too, depending on how you look at it. Because okay. you could look at it like, oh, I'm in a strip club, but it's like people, say it's Friday and Saturday. Yeah. It's like, I might as well go to the strip club because everybody's going to go to the strip club after the club anyway, so I might as well make some money. Yeah. You know, it's just so many different fabricated things that I used to just make up in my mind. Yeah. Just to make it cool, you know what I mean? But okay. it's like those days that um, people that they don't know about is the Friday, the the not Fridays, Saturdays, but like the Sundays and like the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, when it's like nobody really in there and it's no partying. Then the girls and the drama and the guys and then yeah. the weirdos. It's like a lot. Yeah, man. So I don't want to I don't want to call anybody out, but um, anybody have any experience with this? With, with strip clubs? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Absolutely. I, I was oh, a yeah. frequent contributor. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so I, Me too. Yeah. So I, local staff. I, used to, I, used, I used to manage uh, a strip club. Was it a manager? Uh, oh, and, wow. And, Oh, yeah, good, so good, I, I, good. I've been a part of yeah, that life. Yeah, that's a dollar bill. Shout out to right, you. So, so anybody, <laughs> you ever, anybody ever heard of Jazzy T's? Yeah, yeah I've been yeah. Jazzy T's. All right, so my, my cousin <clears throat> is Jazzy T. Oh, he's wow. Actually, he's the one that actually started the club. Uh, when he mm -hmm. first started the club, it was a, it was a dance club, just, just strictly dancing. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he turned into a strip club. And then when he, once he turned into a strip club, then that's when he made over $1.5 million. That's the, the first wow. strip club I've been to. Yeah, that's yeah. the first strip club I ever went to. Oh, there you go. So yeah, so yeah, I've been I've been God. a part of that life. You know, you know, <laughs> got God history in the build. Removed me from that life. Uh, yeah, yeah, I met I met Tupac there. I mean, I met um, uh, all types of rappers there. Mm -hmm. every, everybody in that in that place, and uh, and so yeah, that world is a totally different world. So. Anybody think that world is, is, is fun? It really isn't. It looks glamorous and it, and it looks good and everything, no. but man, that's a, that's a totally no. different world, bro. And our experience with it is, yeah. is working from the other side, you know, working for Radio 1 yeah. and mm -hmm. flyering up uh, clubs and, yeah, and mm -hmm. events like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's my only experience. I have, I have no other experience. I used yeah. to have to go to Jazzy T's to pick up the money. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha, so gotcha. when they would advertise hey, on radio, yeah. they yeah. would send me yeah. in the middle of the day yeah. to go get the money. Okay, yeah. And yeah. um, they were always yeah. like, somebody. They were always like, yeah. make sure you have on some gloves yeah. before you get that money. Man. <laughs> Listen, one, 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 of, one, of my, up. one of my jobs was to hire to hire the dancers. Oh wow! And so one of my jobs was to mm. you come into the door. The interview was, let's go back to the back, take your clothes off, let me see your body. Jesus, oh, that was geez. that was the interview, mm. right? So I had the I had the opportunity of, of hiring whoever I want to hire in, in that club or saying, no, nah, you got too many stretch marks or you got too many, oh. you know what I'm saying, or whatever the situation mm -hmm. is. So yeah, it's a lot of demons in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't start. Don't yeah. start. Listen, don't start. I, I don't, don't start. Too. Don't start. I mean, yeah, don't start. It's, it's a lot of demons. Uh, I was, was going to ask you because I struggled uh, yeah. when, when I, I rededicated my life to mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. uh, to get that perversion out of my mind because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. the strip clubs led me to pornography mm -hmm. and yes. everything yes. else. So, yes. you know, what, what worked for you? Because I struggled for a while, just okay. being honest. Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, for, so for me, uh, what happened was uh, once I did get saved, I got saved in 2004 and I was living in Warner Robins at the time and I was, I was married to my first wife at the time and I went to this church and that's when I started getting convicted, right? Wow. And my life started to change. So um, God told me, and this is exactly because I, I used to DJ. I, I was like, um, you know, like not like the computer DJ, like turntables and all that mm -hmm. type stuff and everything, like for 15, 20 years, or whatever. Did that secular wise for, for a long period of time. Had all these records, had these CDs, had these uh, porno tapes and everything like that. God told me, he, this is what he, and I, and, I, and I said this at a men's meeting there at, at one time. He told me to take all, he said everything that he, that he does, the devil is under our feet. Mm -hmm. Right, and so what he told me to do was to take every CD that I had, every DVD that I had, put it up under my feet, and to stomp them, mm -hmm. to literally stomp them. Mm -hmm. And he said to take them, take them, and once I stomp them, to take them and literally put them in the trash. Your word, that's his word right there. To literally mm -hmm. put them in the trash. And so I had all of my music. Mm -hmm. Albums. I had about thirty crates of records. Ooh. He told me to throw them away, wow. not to sell them, Jesus, but to throw them away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So every week, I, went, I took a, a, a crate and threw it into the trash. Yeah. All of this music that I've compiled for years, house music, bass music, all, all, all that I did for all of those years and had to li literally just throw them away. And that's how I got out of that. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. That's what God told me to do. Well, I waste a lot of time and a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. I wish I, I could be a millionaire. 
yeah. just being honest. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it's it's dark. Uh, yeah. If you ever if you you don't have that experience, that's a good thing because yeah. again, it's dark. It definitely uh, polluted my mind on how I view women. Yeah, mm-hmm. just being honest yeah. because at least for me, everything I was in there for, yeah, it was be perverted to yeah. whatever nasty fantasy I want to have. Yeah. Yeah. I want to experience with this woman, like. Yeah. That was the only reason I was yeah. in there. It's the yeah. only reason, you know, you pay and you know when you want to see these shows. So, yeah. Yeah. yes, I had to mm. retrain my whole thinking. Yeah. And then even, you know, just being honest, newly married to my wife, mm-hmm. I had to retrain my thinking because, yeah. again, I'm trying to make her do things that she sh- probably ain't comfortable doing mm-hmm. and shouldn't yeah. be doing because I'm still trying to remember that fantasy right. that I had seven years ago, five right. years ago, whatever it was. So, all, all what you watched on the, on, on the video. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. and, and, and to add to that, yeah. I started asking mm-hmm. my wife to watch porno with me. Mm. Cause oh, I was yeah. so addicted, didn't right. even realize I was addicted. Right. Again, my culture. I got. I started going to strip club sixteen, so mm-hmm. very, very oh, young. Wow. Wow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just totally perverted. Yeah. And again, yes. Um, and a shout out to my wife, cause my wife is a soldier. I promise mm-hmm. you, she, uh, she helped me through some dark times mm-hmm. in that area. Yeah. Some dark guy. times. So yeah, I, I, I think, I think a lot of our men are um, enslaved to this. Um, for me, I, I never went to a strip club, but I, I um, was struggled with pornography, and so it's basically the same. Mm-hmm. Same situation, and to get that out of your mind to where you look at women as as um, who they really are mm-hmm. versus what they could do for yeah. you, yeah, and and just their physical appearance. There's so many men that are that are enslaved to that. I literally had to pray, God, please free me from this, mm-hmm. free me from this. And and I remember that prayer, and it scared me because everybody around you makes you feel foolish for not being that. They say mm-hmm. it's normal. Mm-hmm. It's yes. normal to do this and that. Right. But I remember praying that prayer and then all of a sudden God just just changed my heart in my mind where I don't I don't know if everybody deals with this. Like, you know, when you're, you're flipping through channels and all of a sudden you get to a movie, you know, you're going to see something a little bit crazy. Mm-hmm. You see that little end on the screen, you little know, you're scenes, about to see something so, crazy. Mm-hmm. And then it comes back. I used to fall to that all the time. And it and and I just want to say, like, if you pray and you sincerely ask, it's to the point now where it's like I can say, nope. Nope. Yeah. I remember being trapped. Nope. I don't yep. want to see that. Nope. Yep. And and <clears throat> he could give you the strength to resist that at the at the beginning. To where you don't even get you don't even get immersed in it to where you got to dig yourself back out. You see it coming. Mm-hmm. Like God could really change your desires in your mind to where it's like you see it coming. It's like, I remember being trapped by this. No. Mm. Yeah. You yep. see what I'm saying? And it's not yeah. your own strength doing it. It's no. it's God has been working on you for years and years. Um, so I just want to give people like it's not normal. Mm-hmm. No matter what anybody, whatever culture says, it's not normal for you to be going to strip clubs, to be watching pornography, mm-hmm. be constantly uh, pleasuring yourself. I, I don't know what I could say on here. Mm-hmm. It's not normal. It's mm-hmm. not what God recommends for your life. And you can be free. Mm-hmm. There are people who are free from this, legitimately free. So don't ever feel like this is just impossible to overcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seek him, not keep knocking until he answers that prayer. Two things real quick. One, um, and I'm glad that you never got a chance to go to a strip club, but it's totally different in seeing these women in front of you mm-hmm. that you have no connection with wow. and you you imagining what you can do with that woman, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's why a lot of these men go because they feel like they have this imagination of, whoa, what I, what I could do with her, right? And here's the other thing. The enemy being in in heaven, mm-hmm. coming out of heaven, right? Mm-hmm. Getting thrown out of heaven. His, his thing to, me, to mess music up so bad is what's been the biggest thing for, 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 for artists over the last 20 years is to take your music into the strip club. The strip club. Yeah. And as you take your music into the strip club, that's how you feel like you can get your, your, your music or get your weight up in the game, right? Yeah. So you have all of these young people that's, getting, that's being perverted as well who never even thought about stuff like that, but because of the music being so demonic these days that they feel like, okay, if I can get in there, and then and that's a whole generation of people or generations of people that's coming through that's never even thought about it. And mm-hmm. now they're getting mixed up in this and now they have to figure out a way again to get mm-hmm. prayed through this and get prayed out of this because mm-hmm. of that's another way that the enemy tries to infiltrate. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I just yeah. I just want to give people free. Like they're so as soon as like say say publicly I don't I don't watch porn or I don't do this I don't do that. People gonna be like why? You know like it's just so normal. The guys accept that that's just who what guys do. Mm-hmm. It is not. You do not have to be a slave to that. Yeah, and the women going to strip clubs now. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, oh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. like the norm now. And I'm mm-hmm. like. 
Back in the day, that yeah, yeah no I've way. Heard those ones go I've now. heard that. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, couples, know, couples go same um, thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That just shows you the power of of Jesus. And when I was listening to Black China give her testimony, and she was talking about OnlyFans, she was yeah. saying she made millions mm-hmm. and millions mm-hmm. off yeah. OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And when she turned her life to Christ, she was like, okay. I mean, and that takes a lot of character. Like it takes a lot of um, a lot of prayer. You know, to be delivered from something where you're like, okay, this is being dangled in front of me, mm-hmm. but if I go over here, I'll have eternal life. Like that, yeah. to me, yeah. was an amazing testimony that she shared. 